In the previous tutorial, we looked at the representation of uh, series impedances on uh, an impedance Smith chart. In this tutorial, we will be looking at impedances in parallel and how to represent them on a Smith chart. In this case, we'll see how it is advantageous to use an admittance grid for the Smith chart as opposed to an impedance grid, which is what we used for our series connected impedances. First of all, as usual, we have to go to Project Options and then select the frequency that we want to operate at. We'll choose 1 GHz as we did last time. Click on Single Point and then Apply. Also, we will be changing the global units so as to have nano Harris for the inductance but picofarads for the capacitor, which is more suited to the frequency that we've chosen. The next step is to open a new schematic. We'll call it Shunt Impedances. And the first element that we need to add to our schematic is a measurement port. As we've seen before, the port element basically is a signal generator with an internal impedance equal to 50 ohms. And this element is also able to measure incident and reflected power. We can therefore work out the ratio between reflected and incident power, which gives us the reflection coefficient, from the reflection coefficient, as we know, we can work out the impedance seen by port 1. And since the emittance is just 1 over the impedance, is just the inverse of the impedance, we can also easily see what impedance is observed at port 1. Let's just start with a simple resistive load. Press Ctrl L, type in RES, select the closed form resistor, and place it in the schematic like so. Add a ground reference, and then connect the port to the load. We'll then select a value for the load impedance of 50 ohms so as to be in the center of the Smith chart as we had before. Let's set up a graph to verify this. Choose new graph, uh, Smith chart, let's call it shunt impedance. And then right click on the chart, go on to add new measurement. We are again choosing the S11 parameter which is in this case represent the reflection coefficient we select the data source as shunt impedance, which is our schematic. Click on Apply, and then OK. Simulate. Now you can see that, as before, there's no surprise there, we are right at the center of the chart, which corresponds to a reflection coefficient of 0 and uh, uh, a normalized impedance of 1. Now let's go back to our schematic and add an element in parallel with our load. Let's start with our capacitor. Press Ctrl L, type in CAP, and then place the capacitor on the schematic like so. We'll give you the initial value of 5 picofarads, but we'll also make it tunable so that we can see how uh, changing its value changes uh, the reflection coefficient on the chart. Let's go back to this mid chart and uh, simulate. And we can see that now we are somewhere in the bottom half of the Smith chart which is the capacitive part of this chart. And this is what we expected. Let's open the tuner now and select a range for our capacitor between 0 and 20 picofarads. So now, as we uh, increase the value of the capacitor or decrease it, you can see that we are no longer moving on any of the uh, circles which are shown on the grid that we're using at the moment. And that is because we're using an impedance grid the impedance grid comprises of constant resistance circles and then uh, constant um, reactance lines. But in this case, because we're looking at elements in parallel, what we uh, would like to have is constant um, conductance circles and, co and then constant susceptance lines. Uh, we can do this quite easily in microwave office. We just right click on the chart, select properties, and then you can see that we can choose whatever grid we would like to have. We can untick the impedance grid and then tick the admittance grid. Also, we can uh, um, change the density of the contour lines, as we did before, to make it a little bit more coarse and make the chart a little bit more legible. So let's do just that and change this to coarse. Click on Apply and then OK. Now you can see that we've basically rotated the grid by 180 degrees and we ended up with uh, an admittance grid. 
Now if we change the value of the capacitor, you can see that we are now moving on, uh, on a circle which is displayed and that is a circle of constant conductance. Now let's add a marker to the chart just by pressing Ctrl M and clicking on the point of interest. You can see that the marker readout is in terms of uh, impedance still. We've got the normalized resistance R and the normalized uh, reactance X. We can change this as well. We can just right click on the chart, go on to properties. In this case we'll be looking at the uh, markers tab and then you can choose the display type for the readout uh, to be uh, admittance. You can also denormalize it if you want to, but for now we'll keep it normalized. So just click on apply and then OK. Now you can see more clearly that you are on a constant conductance circle where the conductance is equal to 1. And then as you move along this circle this conductance stays the same, but the susceptance changes. Of course, the susceptance cannot cross uh, the circle to the upper half of the chart because we, um, of course, only have a capacitor. For capacitor, we only have uh, positive susceptances and we can only stay in the bottom half of the chart, which is the capacitive chart. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, what happens on a physical level when you change the value of your capacitance. If you decrease the value of uh, the capacitance, you are um, decreasing uh, the susceptance. Remember that the, for the capacitor, the uh, susceptance in uh, absolute value is omega c. So it's directly proportional to uh, the capacitor value. This makes perfect sense if we go back to our schematic and close the tuner. Because, of course, now the capacitor is in shunt, so if our capacitance is really low, so that the plates of the capacitor can't hold any charge, uh, there is no current flowing down this branch, all the current would be going to the load. The branch where the capacitor is, is effectively an open circuit, and hence the capacitor has no effect at all on, uh, on what's happening in our circuit. Now if we increase our capacitance, we can see that we are considerably increasing our susceptance, and ultimately we end up at a point where we have a really high value for the susceptance. If we go back to the schematic again, we can understand this on a physical level, simply thinking that as our capacitor value increases, it means that it's able to draw more and more current, and hence what will happen is that the current will be going down the capacitor and all the way down to ground, and it will be sunk down into the ground and not go into our load. So we end up with a branch which is uh, um, very effective at sinking current and taking it away from our load. And because of this, we'll end up with a very high value for the admittance seen by the port, simply because we are effectively creating a short circuit down to ground. And a short circuit has got zero impedance but infinite admittance. So this is the dual case of, uh, of the uh, series connection for the capacitor. Now let's go back to our schematic and um, get rid of the capacitor and uh, insert a, an inductor in shunt with our load. We'll give it an initial value of 4 nanoharries, but then we'll also make the value tunable so we can see what happens on the Smith chart as we change this value. Click on simulate and then let's go back to our graph. You can see that we are in the top half of the Smith chart and that's of course because we've got some inductive component in our load and we can see what happens as we increase or decrease the value of the inductance. So now if we open the tuner and then select a range for our inductor between 0 and 20. So as we increase the um, inductance of our inductor we end up getting closer and closer to the center of the chart. And that is because, if we go back to our schematic, this branch um, becomes higher and higher impedance as we increase the value of the inductor. As this branch becomes high impedance, then it effectively acts as an open circuit and does not affect at all um, the, uh, the impedance seen by the port. 
Hence the port will just see our load of 50 ohms and will be in the center of the chart as we would be if there was no inductor present. Now if we decrease the value of the inductor we end up moving towards a higher and higher admittance and that is because if the value of the inductor is very low uh, we end up with uh, an, a short circuit to ground here so all the current effectively gets stolen from here um, and, this, uh, and there will be no current going through the load so all the current will be flowing through a short circuit and uh, a short circuit has got uh, zero impedance but infinite admittance and the point that we got to here is a point where the impedance is very low around zero and the admittance tends to infinity. Now if we go back to our schematic um, then we can make a little bit more space here and insert a capacitor in shunt uh, with the inductor and the resistor so as to have all three elements in parallel. We'll make all these elements tunable and we'll assign initial values of 10 picofarads for the capacitor 3 nanoharries for the inductor and 50 ohm for the resistor. Now let's click on simulate and go back to our graph. You may remember that if we only had a capacitor in shunt with the resistor we could only stay in the bottom half of the chart. If we only had an inductor we could only stay in the top half of the chart. But now because we've got both capacitors and inductors then we can move around the constant conductance circle in both directions. Let's see that with the tuner. So if we open the tuner here and set the correct ranges for capacitors and inductors we'll say that the capacitor will be varying between 0 and 20 picofarads and we're fine for the range of the inductor. Now if I increase the capacitance uh, in this case I will be moving down the constant conductor circle in a clockwise direction and if I decrease the capacitance I will be moving in an anticlockwise direction up the circle and you can see that now I've been able to go to the upper half of the circle as well. For the inductor, if I increase the value of the inductance, I will be moving down the circle in a clockwise direction and also I will be able to cross to the bottom half of the circle, just the capacitive bit. And then if I decrease the value of the inductor, I will be moving in a counterclockwise direction and again I'm able to cross and uh, be on uh, either side of the circle by changing either the value of the capacitor or the inductor. Now let's close the tuner, go back to our schematic, take away the tuning from all these elements and then select some random values for the uh, capacitor and, in the, and the inductor and um, see what the resonant frequency uh, is for these elements. So let's change the value of the capacitor to 8 picofarads and the value of the inductor to um, 4 nanoharries. And then let's set up a frequency sweep to be able to see uh, what uh, the resonant frequency of this uh, parallel is. So we we'll go to project options, frequencies, and then we can uh, deselect the single point and set up a range which will be between 0.5 gigahertz and 2 gigahertz in a step on 0.01 gigahertz. Click on apply and then OK. And now simulate. If we go to a graph now, we can see that we've got a, a curve described along the constant conductance circle which represents the values of the admittance seen by uh, the port at different frequencies for the parallel combination that we set up in our schematic. Now we can just move the marker to the central point of the Smith chart which corresponds to a point of uh, zero susceptance and we can see what the resonant frequency uh, is uh, for this particular combination. In this case we can see that it's around 890 megahertz. So we've been able to uh, work out what the resonant frequency of our parallel combination was quite easily. This would tie in uh, very well with the uh, formulae that were given in the manual.